So welcome to the next in our online series of messages brought to you by the friends at First Church Rowley. This is Reverend Tom Bentley, the pastor, hoping these messages can help you in your journey of life. If you'd like to know more about the ministry of First Church Rowley, there is some information for you at the end of this video. So thank you for spending time with us. So grace and peace to you from our friend Jesus. Never in my life have I felt that there's so many obstacles in our way as we seek justice and they all seem to be conspiring to block us. I'm realizing that one life is not a long time in existence, not as compared to the timeline of God. I want to see outcomes happen. I want to see the good of life prevail. I want to see fairness and kindness. I want to see our little republic in America seize upon again the great principles that made us a democracy and embrace those in such a way that we can benefit our whole human family. I'm starting to realize that in the years I have left I probably won't see that all work out. I feel disappointed sometimes, yet there is a calling here in a matter of faith that calls us all to a discipline of understanding and participation which is beyond our own gratification, our own satisfaction. When we look for immediate outcomes, we will be disappointed often and that's a spiritual maturity that we need to find in our way of being or we will just end up in despair. The first step to understand this is to know that salvation is is for the other, for someone else, as much as it is for me. It's not just for me, certainly. And the great failure of the conservative movement in the Protestant Christian community is that salvation is all about me and my personal Savior Jesus. That's not really what salvation is about. Salvation is about everyone, about the community. Wholeness has to include everybody, not just me. And wholeness and salvation are really the same word in Hebrew. Jesus sees his own followers really despairing as they struggle to live a life of love in a world that is dominated by hate. And he tells a story about the unrighteous judge, that's what it is. It's in the 18th chapter of Luke, and the judge is being bothered by this widow who's trying to have her case resolved to her favor, and the judge is annoyed by this woman. She keeps coming back. In the end, it isn't uh, any sense of propriety or morality or the law that makes this judge decide in her favor. It's just the fact he's totally sick of her bothering him. Her persistence ends up prevailing. And so then Jesus says to his disciples, So what makes you think God won't step in and work justice for his chosen people who continue to cry out for help? Won't he stick up for them? I assure you he will. He will not drag his feet. But how much of that kind of persistent faith will the Son of Man find on the earth when he returns? Persistent faith means striving for justice and for healing and the betterment of us all, no matter what. Because the persistence is the salvation, not the outcome. I think of a story from South Africa. In that terrible situation of apartheid, Africans had to ride a bus from the ghetto city of Soweto to serve the whites in Pretoria, the capital, and then go back the same day. It was an exhausting way to survive. And under that oppression, many people lost hope. There was an elderly woman who would ride the bus every day. They called her Zulu Zion. And she would invite people to understand that in their persistence, they were in that place of Zion, the Mount Zion. 
Climbing, climbing Mount Zion does not mean we will reach the peak. It, does, it doesn't mean that. It's about being of the mountain. We are climbing. We are climbing Jacob's ladder. We are climbing Jacob's ladder. We are climbing Jacob's ladder. Soldiers of the cross. Our human existence is climbing, being present to the task and persisting, not reaching the peak, not in this form at least. Zion is that great place where, well, this is where Yahweh, the God of Israel, dwells, so tells us the prophet Isaiah. And the psalmist says this is a place where Yahweh is king, God is king, and where he has installed his king David. Mount Zion. It is thus the seat of the action of Yahweh in the universe. And we can be there in a moment of faith. Because you see, the New Testament instructs us about this presence of God, and it isn't something far off in a physical place as much as a place of being now. The author of Hebrews instructs us in the New Testament that the primordial act of creation when we were made and all things were brought into being set the stage for redemptive history which culminates in the eschatological transformation of creation itself. That is what Jesus is speaking of when he talks about his return. It's the culmination of all things. It's the salvation to all things, not just to little individuals who want to feel better with Jesus. The woman called Zul Zion invites us and all those people to persist in their struggle for justice and the full life that God promises in this place of celebration. Mount Zion. Can we take the invitation? Can we take the invitation? Or are we going to simply ride around aimlessly on the bus in despair? The satisfaction of faith is in its persistence, not its palliative comforts. Persist, therefore. Be persistent in your faith. We're all called to be together in that, and at that moment of understanding as we work together, there comes the presence of God, which is the celebration of all things and the victory promised in Jesus already. In his name, amen. So thank you again for spending time with us. If you'd like to know more about the First Congregational Church of Raleigh, you can go online at firstchurchrally.org. And of course, we'd always like to hear from you. You can call us anytime at 978-948-3993. So peace and best wishes. Goodbye.